prepare me to be a saint. Sure. Pure and holy, bright and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. If that's your prayer, repeat those words. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. The word says, Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy, Lord, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, have thanksgiving, I'll be a sanctuary for you. So the Lord is asking us to ask him, will you ask me to be, to prepare you to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, a sanctuary for me? Will you be a living sanctuary full of thanksgiving and happiness and joy that I can come and sup with you and live my life through you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Ah. Hey, when we are tried as a sanctuary, yes. we found true amen amen thank you so much apostle for that beautiful rendition of lord prepare me to be a sanctuary thank you for ministering that song truly truly that sets the foundation and it sets the tone it sets the position and the posture in which we want to listen to what the spirit of the Lord has to say to us. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Praise God. Uh, I greet you in the name of Jesus. I praise God for each and every one of you. I just give God the glory. I give him all the praise. Hallelujah. I praise God. I give honor to to God, who is truly the head of my life. I give honor to apostle and prophet 
as our leaders. Hallelujah. I praise God for 11 years. Glory be to God. I praise God for each and every one that is here in this virtual sanctuary under the sound of my voice in your respective places. I give God the glory for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he is about to do. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor and glory as we sit and sup with you, Lord God, as we come to the table, Lord God, that you have prepared, Lord God, hallelujah, to eat of your word, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We are open, Lord God, and we are available. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for setting, Lord God, hallelujah, this atmosphere, shifting us, Lord God, focusing us in, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I decrease, Lord God, that you increase in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen, amen, and amen. So we know our topic is what's in your house, hallelujah, and there is a subtitle that I have that the Lord gave me. And that is power of the poor. And so poor is an acronym, P-O-U-R. The power of the poor, spelled P-O-U-R. And so hopefully you will take notes um, because I do have a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of scriptures, okay? <laughs> So look, we have saying power, okay? We know how to persevere, all right? And so there is a push and a press, all right, that's gonna come with this with this word, hallelujah, hallelujah. So this is 2 Kings uh, chapter four, verses one through seven. You have heard it. You heard it in the legacy um, a version. Now you will hear it in the amplified version. And I will highlight some words that I will tell you um, that is different in the King James Version that I will be giving definition to, okay? So starting, um, starting at verse one, and this is in the Amplified. Now, one of the wives of a man of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha for help, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant reverently feared the Lord, but the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves in payment for a loan. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have of value in the house? She said, your maidservant has nothing in the house except a small jar in the King James, it says pot in the King James version of olive oil. Then he said, go borrow containers from all your neighbors, empty containers in the King James, it is vessels, vessels, okay? Take a note of that and not just a few. Then you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out the oil you have into all these containers or vessels and you shall set aside each one when it is full. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They were bringing her the containers as she poured the oil. When the containers were all full, she said to her son, bring me another container. And he said to her, there is not one left. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Then she came and told the man of God, he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons can live on the rest. So I want to give some definitions as I um, always do as the Lord leads me um, to define. Um, and one definition I want us to take note of is house. House 
is the word Z-I-A. This is in the Hebrews Strong's Concordance as H-1004, pronounced by it. And I'm sorry for those that do know the Hebrew language. I'm sorry for chopping up these words. I'm doing my best. Okay. Um, which means, which means um, inside or inward. It means home or born. It means within. It is a dwelling, a habitation, a shelter or abode. It is a place, a receptacle, a receptacle. Make note of that. It is a temple. Um, it is a house, a house as containing a family, like a household. Okay. Those belonging to the same household. It also means on the inside. On the inside. So that is the word house, okay? And so also, um, as, as stated in, in our prayer, in our prayer, uh, excuse me, in our song, um, temple or also sanctuary, sanctuary. So as we look at and as we survey, we're going to take um, some lessons from this widow woman of uh, things that should be in our house and ways in which we should govern our house. Ways in which we should govern in the kingdom of God, in our house, in our sanctuary, okay? Um, managing everything that is within our sanctuary, okay? Now we understand that our house, our house being a sanctuary, it's lordship because as for me and my house, okay, <laughs> Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord as for me and my house, okay? <laughs> so let, let us be clear, okay, as to whom we submit because when we, when we talk about his lordship, we are talking about his authority, okay? We are under his authority. It is who we submit to, our Lord, our Jehovah Yahweh, okay? All right, so then I want to um, define pot, pot. So she said she has a pot of oil. So pot, um, in the Hebrew H610 is J-E-Q, which is pronounced asuk. It means a flask or a small oil jug, a flask or small oil jug. And um, we heard um, Apostle uh, RJ, he he talked about he did some uh, some more research, and I believe he said that it it could have been around like a pint. Okay, so we don't know the exact size. Okay, but um, but that is what she had. Okay, what she said she had. Oil is the word O N Y, pronounced shemen, which is H eight zero eight one. And it is the the um, the definition is richness, figuratively richness, anointing, fruitful, olive, fat. Uh, it is uh, as a staple medicament. Uh, it is for anointing. It is also ilion in the Greek, G1637. It is a fuel for lamps, 
It is for healing the sick. It is for anointing the head and body at feasts. And it is mentioned among articles of commerce. Note that. It is mentioned among articles of commerce, meaning that can be sold. All right. The next term that we will be defining is vessel. Vessel is I-L-K, pronounced Keely. And the Strong's is H3627. And so this is defined as something prepared, an apparatus, as an implement. I hope you guys are taking notes. Utensil, dress, a weapon, armor, artillery, bag, carriage, furnish, furniture, jewel, pot, okay, um, let's see here. It can be an implement of hunting or war, an implement of music, an implement tool of labor, Equipment uh, for yoke of oxen. Because see, if, if you know the word at all, as, as I am giving you these definitions, you should be able to make scriptural references where um, God has, has, uh, really has really utilized, even if it's metaphorically, um, us as vessels, right? And so... Um, or, you know, because we know that, you know, he looks at us, you know, as a, as a hammer, he said, I will use you as a battle axe. Okay. <laughs> a battle axe. And so, so we want to, we have, we want to have an understanding that, you know, in the hands of the Lord as his vessels, he can and has made us all of these things, all of these things and more in as in diversity to use us in whatever capacity that he needs to use us in. So I've been saying for years, you know, I don't necessarily have to be called anything, just call me vessel, okay? <laughs> because I am a vessel of God. And so, which is very general, however, even in our generality, then we are giving God permission to use us in whatever capacity that he needs to use us in as being his vessels, okay? As being his, his houses, his sanctuary, his dwelling place, okay? Um, another definition is the word bull, which is B-O-U-L-H, pronounced boule, G-1012. Now, I found this definition to be very um, uh, interesting, but it is not, it, it is really um, giving us more and more revelation, okay? So this definition is G-0102. 1012 volition uh objectively advice or by implication purpose it means advise counsel and will so as a as a vessel as used for his purpose a vessel of purpose a vessel that has been formed by his counsel, a vessel that has been formed by his will, okay? Those, those are some other definitions, all right? Now, also interesting uh, enough, um, I found G4040 in my studies of the word vessel. And this is in the Greek, per, uh, peri, 
Opos, which is the word P E R O I O I K O J P E R I O I K O J. And this means house around. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. <laughs> this means housed around. And so there are houses around us. This means neighboring, for example. Mm, interesting, right? Dwelling around. It means a neighbor. So there are other vessels dwelling around a neighbor. And we know that's who she had to go borrow vessels from. <laughs> I hope you all are following. This is class, right? <laughs> so here are some lessons that we can learn. And so our first letter of the acronym POOR, remember this is power of the poor. Okay, so our first word is P for prayer. So this is power of prayer, power of prayer. So this is what we have in our house. Remember, these are our lessons and what we have learned. So our house, our vessel must be a house of prayer. And I just been listening to that by um, our brother minister, um, Eddie James. Uh, make me a house, Lord, make me a house of prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. We heard from the woman of God, um, you know, what was it, Friday night, you know, pure and holy, tried and true. She told us to, to be clean, that we are to be clean vessels, to be holy vessels, to be uh, worthy vessels, vessels of honor, Vessels of honor, God, make me your dwelling place. For as we know, the spirit of God does not dwell in an unclean vessel. So as we abide in him, he abides within us. The widow inquired of the Lord as she went to Elisha. She sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness knowing that he will provide all things that she needs will be added unto her. And so that's Matthew 6, 33. She took the position of inquiring of the Lord, just like David in Psalm 27, 4, where he says, one thing I have, have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. We must be a house of prayer. We must be a sanctuary of prayer that we are always in inquiry, in the, in the place of inquiry. And so when we pray, it is a dialogue. So we need to, we need to wait for God to answer. <laughs> We need to wait for God to answer us, okay? It's not just get, you know, get down there and pray and get back up, right? <laughs> we need to wait for God to answer us. And when, when David said, this is where I want to be, this is the thing that I desire, that I dwell in his temple, that I be in his temple, in him, in me. We know that after Jesus Christ, that we are the temples. We are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Okay. He is, you know, he dwells within us. The kingdom of God is within us. And so I want to just, just point out some things here. She was in a place of prayer. It was one of desperation, one of desperation and I'm going to define desperate because God began to talk to me about this, okay? So this is where we get a chance to do some self-examination, okay? She did not want her sons to be taken. 
She didn't want her sons to have to go into slavery. She was desperate for an answer. And so desperate, desperation is having lost hope. It is like a desperate spirit crying for release, relief. It is giving no ground for hope. She, she didn't have anything left. We see, she said, all I have of value. I don't have anything except for this, this pot of oil. We can deduce, we can deduce from that that she had already sold everything that she had. It wasn't that she didn't have anything in her house, you know, ever. She didn't, it wasn't that she didn't have anything of value in her house at all, ever. We can deduce that that's all that she had left of value in her house, okay? And so, you know, we, we have to, when we are seeking God, we have to, we have to look at, look at what it says and look at what it doesn't say. Okay. And so she was moved by despair. She did not know what else to do. She was at the end of her rope. She was at the end of herself. And it also means involving or employing extreme measures in an attempt to escape defeat or frustration, suffering extreme need or anxiety, involving extreme danger or possible disaster or of extreme intensity. She had extreme intensity. So she wasn't going, see when we go to the Lord, I'm just going, I'm just going to read from my notes. I'm just going to read from my notes because then I'm going to get ahead of myself. So one of the lessons, okay, that we can take is that her, her determination, her determination was fueled by des des desperation. So those of you that are taking notes, your determination, if you're desperate enough, okay, you will be determined enough. All right. And so her determination was fueled by desperation. One of the lessons that we can learn from this widow's plight is that she was desperate. She was at the end of herself. The only thing she had left of value was a pot of oil. God said to me, some Christians in first world countries are just not desperate enough. So it wasn't just about the United States. I know because we're here, we just want to pick on the U.S. We're not the only first world, first world country in the world, okay? This is what the Lord was saying. Are just not desperate enough. When you are truly desperate, you will prayerfully and humbly seek the solution from God and you will do what he says no matter how uncomfortable you are and no matter what it looks like or sounds like. She did not want her sons in slavery and she was willing to do whatever prophet Elisha told her to do as he represented the voice of God. In this distress, the poor widow goes to Elisha in dependence. I was like, when Evangelist Sean talking about being independence on God, in the, we don't ever want to be independent of God, but we want to remain in dependence on God. In dependence upon his promise, a promise that the seed of the righteous shall never be forsaken, nor his seed will never be begging bread. Hallelujah. Independent on his word and on his promises. Here are some reflection questions that I have for you that I began to ask myself because we are first partakers, you know. So here's the first question. And you can do this for homework or whenever you go back over this message, okay? Ask yourself, am I walking in complete obedience of what God told me to do, of the instructions he has given me? 
or am I too comfortable? Do I have too many available options or alternative plans? Instead of strictly and immediately doing what God said to do. She did it strictly and she did it immediately. There was no hesitation. She was desperate. She was desperate. So she was determined. She was fueled by that determination because she was desperate. And so maybe partially and eventually or when I can fit it into my schedule. So am I doing it strictly or am I doing it partially? Am I doing it immediately or am I doing it eventually or when I can fit it into my schedule? Have I chosen my own plan B, C, or D? Because it is easier, does not require effort, or even thought. Have I chosen the less or lesser instead of having a never the less posture? I will repeat. Have I chosen the less or lesser instead of having a never the less posture? My God, I know. Okay, so let us move on further within our lesson here and let us deal with the dilemma of debt. Let us deal with the dilemma of debt. And thank you so much, Apostle, for setting that, that foundation. And then this, so this is gonna soften. This is gonna kind of soften. I said, oh, look, look at God just softening this message up. But however, I do not want you to take the message softly, okay? You're going to land softly because of the foundation that apostle laid, all right? I love y'all, okay? So her husband left her with the dilemma of debt. And in my research of Matthew Henry commentary, it said, because I had to get some more insight on this part. He said, it said, he died in poverty, deeply in debt, more than he could repay. His debts were not due to extravagant living or reckless spending. He was a devout man who feared the Lord and avoided such behavior. In fact, true religious faith encourages individuals to live within their means and spend only what they have received from God, even on lawful expenses. Failing to do so can prevent them from fulfilling their obligations to others, resulting in ongoing injustice. However, even those who fear God may find themselves in debt due to unfortunate circumstances such as losses at sea, bad debts, or personal misjudgments as I have made so many times in my life. As the faithful are not always shrewd in worldly matters. It's possible that this prophet faced poverty due to persecution during Jezebel's reign, prophets struggled to survive, especially if they had families to support. So to be transparent, there are times in my life I have found myself in debt due to my poor choices and being impatient. Impatient. Maybe you have too. God put his finger on Proverbs 22, verse 7, as I go into the rest of this message. The rich rule over the poor. The one who borrows is a slave to the one who lends. You probably have heard it 
the borrower is a slave to the lender. This is why her sons were going to be required to, to pay off, to work, to pay off the debt. And the rule and standard of the day, as I researched further, um, was to satisfy a debt you had to work for seven years. So we must make sure when we pray and ask God for the financial increase, listen, that we do not pray and ask amiss with the wrong motives. James 4, 1 through 3 in the Amplified reads, what leads to the unending quarrels and conflicts among you? Do they not come from your hedonistic desires that wage war in your bodily members, fighting for control over you? You are jealous and covet what others have, and your lust goes unfulfilled, so you murder. You are envious and cannot obtain the object of your envy, so you, so you fight in battle. You do not have because you do not ask it of God. That's you have not because you ask not. Scripture, okay? Verse three, you ask God for something and you do not receive it because you ask with the wrong motives. That means you ask amiss. Out of selfishness or with an unrighteous agenda so that when you get what you want, you may spend it on your hedonistic desires. <laughs> I, I move on. Some of this, I'm just gonna read the scripture and move on because see the word, the word does the work. I don't have to do no, I don't have to say no more, okay? Be encouraged that just like in the widow's account, we have what we need and for God has positioned us to prosper. I want you to be encouraged that you have everything that you need. She had everything that she needed for that miracle to take place. And she was positioned because of her posture of prayer, because of her posture of humility, because of her posture of, of knowing that, that the word of God is true and that God is faithful, she was positioned to prosper. Jeremiah 1.5 in the Amplified Version says, we were born on purpose. I'm sorry, it says, I'm sorry. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen interest, in, instrument, instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you. So remember, I said we were instruments, right? Vessels, instruments. Uh, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So we were born on purpose. We were born with a purpose. And we were equipped for our purpose in this earth. Okay. We were born on purpose with our purpose. And we were equipped for our purpose in this earth. Romans 11, 29 states, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, meaning God's gifts and callings are irrevocable and that God will not change his mind about, about you and what he has called someone to do or the gifts that he has given to you. In the Message Bible, Romans eleven twenty nine 29 reads, God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty. 
never canceled and never rescinded. Deuteronomy 8 reads, and I'm just going to read verse number one, and then I'm going to read 14 through 17, or excuse me, 14 through 18, because we're talking about what's in our house, right? All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Remember, she was obedient that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Verse number 14. Then thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee the, uh, through the great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at the latter end. And thou say in thine heart, after all of that, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. No. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember. This is, this, this is key, y'all, for real. Deuteronomy 8.18. For it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. So that's the wealth that Apostle was talking about. I'm glad that she clarified because although you may not have been born into it does not mean that you will never possess it. And God is still aligning us. And, and this is part of this message so that you understand that wealth is your portion. It is a portion because he, he, Jesus Christ became poor that we may be rich. I want you to have an understanding and be built up in your faith that that is the promise of God for you and I, okay? According to Deuteronomy 8, that comes with conditions, verse 1. It comes with conditions, okay? That we be obedient, all right? So... It is he that giveth the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So let's define power. Let's define power. So that word is GK, Strong's H3581, pronounced coat, coat. That's K-O-A-K-H. And this means uh, vigor. It means capacity. Means to produce. It means ability. Force. Fruits. Might. Strength. Substance. And it means wealth. <laughs> Y'all hear me? It, it, okay. The power to get wealth. He's given us wealth to get wealth. He's given us a wealth of, of strength. He's given us a wealth of gifts. He's given us his spirit. Hallelujah. He's given us everything that pertains unto life and godliness as we have already heard. Okay. He has given us human strength. He has given us his power, his oil, his anointing. He has given us his mighty power. Also, you know, everybody knows this word, dunamis, G1411, is miraculous power and abundance of power. It means mightily mighty 
a, a worker of miracles. <laughs> of miracles. He's given us a work of miracles. He's given us a power, a work of miracles to get wealth. That's exactly how he set up the woman with the, the widow of oil. Okay, that had the oil. Mm. Woo, y'all, I'm, listen, all right, I'm, I'm gonna continue with these definitions because I'm telling you, it's, it's just, <laughs> I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to maintain, all right, I'm just trying to maintain because if I, if I start flying off, then y'all know I'm going to get the going, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to teach it and not preach it, all right, so this is, um, Moral power and excellence of soul. It is the power and influence which belong to riches and wealth. He's given us the power, right? He's given us the influence, uh-huh, which belong to riches and wealth. He's given us great influence. It is power and resources arising from numbers. It is, listen, it is power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. <laughs> Angelic powers, hallelujah. <laughs> armies of angels, hallelujah, listen. The God of angel armies, hallelujah. The force of God is with us, hallelujah. We have the victory, we triumph. We're not lacking anything. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, all right, wealth. This is defined as this word is L-I-G. And it is Kyil, K-H-A-H-Y-I-L. The Strong's is H2428. And this is force. This is the word wealth, all right? And it, it means uh, of men. It is force of men, of means, of resources, and army. Virtue, virtue, which is the anointing power of God. Valor, okay. <laughs> Able activity. It is uh, a band of men or soldiers, a company, great forces, goods, host. This is all wealth, might, power, riches, strength. Do some of these words sound familiar to you? Yes, because we just define it in the word power, okay? Substance, valiantly, train, train or training, valor, virtuously, war, efficiency, <laughs> okay, mm. Glory be to God. Okay, one more scripture under this P, okay, y'all? Under power of prayer. All right? Under power of prayer, under prayer. And that is Deuteronomy 15, verse 6. For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised you. And you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. And you will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. This is the promise, okay, within our prayer that we are taking as our prayer, okay, before the Lord, all right? Now, these are things that we need to make sure we do and that remain resident in our house. So the O is obedience. So here we're tapping into the power of obedience, okay? 
So we're on the O of four. So we have prayer. Now we have obedience. So there are um, lessons under this, under this O, okay? And so we need to be open. We need to have openness. We must be open and available for what God wants to do and how he wants to do it. She had to humble herself to go and borrow the vessels. We must remove all pride. We must trust in the Lord with all of our heart, lean not to our own understanding and in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It took humility and trust in the Lord. The Psalm 37, 11 says, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. And we must recognize that you have to ask others in your community. Some people have a problem with this because of pride. You must ask others. Remember the neighboring vessels, okay? In your community for help to do what God has called you to do. She was borrowing from them. So a borrow means, because he said to borrow, so at some point, I believe that she was going to have intentions to, to take their vessels back to them, okay? After she had the money and all of that, okay? So it was a borrow. They didn't give, give them. It was a borrow. Note that, okay? And so... That is why the enemy, because the enemy does not want us to operate in community, be, he, that's why he puts, puts you all in a place of pride where I, I'm not trying to ask nobody, um, you know, then they're going to know I got problems going on in my house. So, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. We ain't going to have people all up in our business and letting them know that we need anything. Then we're going to look like that we don't have, we, we're not righteous or we don't have faith. Do you see how the enemy twists twist and turns things on us? Right? Because see, he wants you to be in that spirit of pride so you don't reach out. Okay? So that you don't get any help. So that you stay in bondage. So that you stay in slavery. Because that's what he wants for you. Okay? So that's why the enemy loves to cause division in the body of Christ. Imagine if we didn't have denominations and we truly moved as the body, one army of kingdom vessels. Wow. Imagine that. <laughs> Woo! Listen, let me tell you what Alicia did. Okay, let me tell you what he did. Alicia activated her oil. He stared up the gift, the anointing that was on her life. He didn't give her money to pay the debt. He gave her a strategy, as I say in Transcending Horizons. He gave her a strategy. Okay, <laughs> to package her power for profitability. <laughs> to package her power for profitability. He didn't just give her the money to solve her problem. Instead, he helped her to start a business selling oil and gave her instructions to use what she had, which was the oil. This also shows us the best way to help people in need. And that is to give them a strategy to empower them to improve their situation through their own hard work, through their own gifts, and through their own creativity. We want to take note here before we take uh, the, the, first, the first step, okay? We want to take, take this note, okay? He gave her only the first step. Now, I know because I get like this too. You want to know what the step is after that one. I, I know. I, 
I know, look. <laughs> Some of y'all want all five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten steps all at the same time. <laughs> and then what, Lord? <laughs> Okay, I got I got you. I, I I know what you said that you wanted me to do first. I know. Okay. All right. And God is like, yeah. Uh-huh. Now go ahead and do it. But but once I do that, Lord, uh, what what did you what what was it that I was gonna do next? What was I what was I gonna do next? Hmm. Okay. She was simply obedient to get the vessels and follow the first instruction. I read one time that obedience is not about following rules, but about following instructions. Simply put, follow the directions. Follow the directions. We know she had to borrow the empty vessels, fill them with oil, and when she ran out of vessels, the oil stopped flowing, and then she went back to get Prophet Alicia, went to Prophet Alicia to get the next set of instructions. He told her to go and sell the oil. Sometimes you're still in your waiting period because God gave you just one step, the first step, and then you said, well, I need to still wait on God. God said, I'm still waiting on you to do what I told you to do first. Hello? Okay, uh, all right. Okay, so a long time ago, God showed me the vessels could be thought of as two as actual people. These were specifically empty vessels, which are the people that had the capacity to receive that needed the oil that she had. They were empty vessels. She brought the vessels into her house and shut the door so that the miracle would not be seen by people who passed by and she would have privacy from the creditors. She began to pour her oil and as long as we have vessels that we are pouring our oil into, then the oil that God has put on us and in us will never stop flowing. As soon as we stop working in the area, listen, because remember, we also define vessel as purpose, okay? And in his will. So as soon as we stop working in the area, that we have been purposed and anointed to flow in with the oil, the oil will stop multiplying. Okay? Two things. When you run out of vessels, and when, because when you run out of vessels, the, the oil doesn't have any need to multiply. So in order to keep the oil multiplying, we must continue to have more and more vessels available. And so will the prosperity and the wealth that has been promised to us. So, so when we stop moving in the purpose of which our vessel has been purposed for in our giftings, in our anointings, then, then the prosperity and the wealth because that's what the prosperity and the wealth follows is the purpose and the anointing and the gifting. Okay. The you, let's move on to the you. The you is for unique. There is power of the unique gifts. We're in Romans 12, six through eight. New Living Translation. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, 
give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. People of God, we don't want to be like the servant with the one talent in Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. We don't want to be like that. And I'm going to go ahead and read it, but I know all of you on here are leaders, but we know that, the, that those are not the only people that is listening to this word of God. So I'm going to read it in the Amplify. Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. For it is just like a man who was about to take a journey and he called his servants together and entrusted them with his possessions to one he gave five talents to another two and to another one each according to his own ability and then he went on his journey no each according to each one according to his own ability we've all been given diverse talents diverse gifts okay in 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 different numbers it may be one two or five one through five, okay? The one who had received one talent had also came forward. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm jumping from verse 15 down to verse 24. Matthew 25, I jumped from verse 15. I went read 14 and 15. Now I'm going to verse 24. And it reads, because I, what I stated was, we don't want to be like the servant who had the one talent. So the one who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid to lose the talent. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is your own. But his master answered him, you wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I reap the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money with the bankers. And at my return, I would have received my money back with interest. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents for to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from God and has used them wisely, more will be given and he will be richly supplied so that he will have an abundance. You want to come into abundance? You want to come into increase? Come on now but from the one who does not have because he has ignored and disregarded his blessings and gifts from God, even what he does have will be taken away. Are you ignoring and disregarding your blessings and your gifts from God? Are you tapping in and utilizing and working in your purpose and walking in the anointing and what God has gifted you for? Or or are you the one who is burying some of your talent? Because see, God has put treasure in our earthen vessels. He has given us his word. He has given us the power to get well. He has given, he has anointed us for such a time as this. Are, are you one that's gonna go and bury it? Give excuses, do what is, is convenient for you? and expect God to just bless what it is that you're willing to do or what you feel like that you have the capacity to do. It says, <laughs> verse 30, and throw out the worthless servant into the outer darkness in that place of grief and torment there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. 
God is serious about this, y'all. I cannot stress this enough. God is serious about us moving in what he has called us to do. It is your time. This is the generation that he called you to be in. It is, it is always your time to arise and shine. For thy light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The time is always now. What are you waiting for? You were called for such a time as this. And you might be like, well, the economy, well, this and that. And it's, God said, I ain't thinking about that. Do what I called you to do. It's not seasonal. It's not a seasonal obedience. Your purpose and his plan for you is not seasonal. It is not dependent on anything except for your mere obedience. The fact that you have breath in your body, because if Paul can operate from prison, I know you can operate and you free. I don't know what to tell you. This is the word of God. And he's in, and if you feel called on the carpet, then good, right? You feel like it's a come to Jesus meeting, it is. <laughs> God has given you unique gifts. Your oil is unique. There are people waiting on you to, to rise up in what it is that he's called you to do. I can't do it. Apostle can't do it. Pastor Billy can't do it. Evangelist Sean can't do it. Prophet Jerry. God, listen, it's you. <laughs> you have people that God has called you to that your anointing is needed for. Your testimony is needed. What God has brought you through, your witness is needed. Your gifts are needed. What are your gifts? What has God gifted you with? And your gifts, by the way, is something that you can just naturally do exceptionally well. <laughs> like some people came here with voices to sing. Okay, they've been singing since they could talk. All right, exceptionally well. Yes, it is your solution. And, and some of us have more than one. Mm. Y'all, I... Listen, y'all can read all of Luke 12, but I just said, Lord, I'm just going to give them the, these, these couple of verses because, you know, this is long enough already and I just can't read everything. But y'all can read all of Luke 12 because this is something else. Because I... <laughs> this go to verses 47 and 48. I believe this is the New Living Translation. All right. So it says, Luke 12, 47, 48, the servant who knows what his master wants and ignores it or insolently does whatever he pleases, that insolently means disobediently, does whatever he pleases, will be thoroughly thrashed. Ooh. Mm. all right i'm I, okay i'm gonna continue on okay so so in other words if you know what you're supposed to be doing you know what the master has required of you okay it says but if he does a poor job through ignorance, and, and it's not many of y'all leaders that can claim ignorance. He'll get off with a slap on the hand. Great gifts mean great responsibilities. Greater gifts, greater responsibilities. You know it as to whom much is given, much is required. We like to kind of kidnap that scripture and, 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 and be all happy about it. <laughs> you better go back and, and read it in context. 
so that you understand that if you've been given much, God is requiring much. And you better understand that if you're not doing all that he's called you to do after you know what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to be thrashed. That's what the Bible, it says wit in other versions. Your punishment is going to be harsh, more harsh. Because you knew and you were disobedient. Well, the Bible says that the ways of a transgressor are hard. So there it is. Okay. Ecclesiastes 10, 18, 19. And I don't know what version this is from. But a shiftless man lives in a tumble down shack. A lazy woman ends up with a leaky roof. Okay, if you're just lazy and not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Laughter and bread go together and wine gives sparkle to life. But it's money that makes the world go around. You know it as money answers all things. There's no lack in the kingdom. There's no lack in the kingdom of God. Everything that you need is on the inside of you. What's in your house? Put it to work. Put the word to work. Work the word. What's in your house? Put the faith to work. Work your faith. Because faith without works is dead. Mm hmm Okay. The R in and I'm and I'm wrapping up is for the power of revelation that causes a revolution. The R is for revelation that causes a revolution. This is the power of the revelation that causes a revolution. So what Elijah brought to her was revelation of what was in her house, the value of what she had left in her house. And the revelation that he gave her as to what to do with it caused a revolution, which is a quick and sudden change. The widow moved by faith and not by sight. She had to move with expectation of manifestation of the miracle. She could not wonder have any fear or any doubt based on her pot of oil, no matter the size, it was not enough. She knew that. But she had to believe that because prophet Elisha spoke the word to pour and fill the borrowed vessels, that it would miraculously do just that. So we must increase our faith to believe God for what is impossible to us and know that with God, all things are possible. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of my law where I reveal my will because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, no revelation of God in his word, the people are unrestrained, meaning they, they perish. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God, who does the will of God, who is obedient to the word of God. Second Timothy 3, I'm, I'm showing y'all this, uh, all I'm giving you, all this is proof, okay? All, all of this is evident. Okay, Proverbs 4, 5 through 9 says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. The way to increase 
what we have is to use it. Thus, to whom much is given, much is required. It is not us hoarding our talents, burying our talents, but it is putting them to work that multiplies them. And it, and as you notice, she, he didn't say have your sons pour the oil. He said, you pour the oil. It's your oil, you pour it. So you, you have to do, it has to be about what is in your hand, what's in your house, not in somebody else's. Okay. And so, um, and so as we see here that the blessing was connected to what it, it worked in the miracle work because it was in her hand. Luke 6 38 says, give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Pour out. Pour. Mm. Okay. Psalm 23, 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. He anoints us. Our cup overflows. God multiplies what we have in our hand, just like in 1 Kings uh, uh, chapter 17. And this is when, um, with the prophet Elijah, who saw the woman, the, the widow, she was gathering sticks of firewood and he called out to her and said, please bring me a little water in a jar so that I may drink. As she was getting it, he, he called her to her and said, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. And she said, here's key, as the Lord your God lives, I have no bread, only a handful of flour in the bowl and a little oil in the jar. Okay, so, so, so what it was, it was little, just like the jar of oil in the other widow's house. Okay, and so he said, "Look, go make me a cake, and I and 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 then make your son uh, one for yourself and for your son." She did it. She was obedient, and he said, "The not be exhausted, nor shall the jar of oil be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain again on the face of the earth." And she was obedient. And she said, and she and, and he and her household ate for many days. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty in accordance with the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Elijah. Again, multiplication. Multiplication based on what she had in her house. Okay. Okay. Matthew 14, 13 through 21, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we know the, the story of the fish in the two, uh, uh, of the two fish in the five loaves of bread. It was exponentially multiplied. But Jesus said uh, to them, this is verse 16, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing. So remember in all these accounts, they all, they all were like, we don't have anything, but we don't have anything, but okay. So that may be the same thing that we're saying, God, we don't have anything, but this. Okay. He said, we have nothing except five loaves and two fish. All right. And we give the same response. Each time God demonstrated the miracle of exponential increase. It came by putting it in his hands. That's what we have to do. We got to give God what it is that we do have. Put it in his hands. Okay. That's what that's what uh was done with the uh the widow um uh that had the bread uh and feeding the, the prophet. That's what was done with the two fish and five loaves of bread was put in God's hands and in and, and oil 
the oil was was in the hands of the widow, but she brought what she had to the prophet. And so the oil multiplied exponentially as she poured, which means you have to be involved in this process. Thus, this is the work that you do based on your faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And we know the word of God says, and the just shall live by faith. Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power, dunamis power that is at work within us. That is the anointing. That is our faith according to the power, according to the gifts that he's already given us. In our vessel, in our sanctuary, the widow moved by faith with the anointing oil and she poured. This is the power of the poor. See, we must envision big according to the vision that God is showing us. Because when it is a God vision, it is always bigger than what we currently have the resources to fulfill. Breathe. I'm talking to myself and you. <laughs> it is always beyond us. It's always beyond us. We must mount up on wings as an eagle. And guess what, y'all? We're transcending horizons again soar beyond the lids and the limits that the enemy tries to put on us. Soar beyond the limits. Transcend horizons. You are more than an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Whew. We want to be like Paul, y'all. We want to be like Paul. Okay. Paul said in Philippians 2, New Living Translation, starting at verse 14, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud and I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless, but I will rejoice even if I lose my life. Pouring it out like a liquid offering to God. I pour my life out as a drink offering to God. Woo! Y'all, we got to live a life poured out. Hallelujah. We have to live a life poured out. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He says, ah, glory. Hallelujah. Just like your faithful service is an offering to God. Our faithful service is an offering to God. What you pour out is an offering to God. That's why we have to do it in excellence. That's why we have to give all that we have. That's why we have to move forward in the gifts that God has given unto us because that is the way that we experience, hallelujah, God's blessings, God's overflow, uh, the wealth of the kingdom that is laid up for the righteous. It's not falling through the ceiling of your prayer closet. You must be involved in the process. Just like Moses, use what you have in your hand. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share your joy. Let us pray. Thank you that we have eyes that see and ears that hear your voice and see through your eyes. 
remove the scale from our eyes, Lord, that we can see the vision, the big vision through your eyes. Let us not minimize. Let us not try to downgrade what you have shown us, oh God. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center, this is Ephesians 1.18, and core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people. Lord, we serve you with gladness and it is our pleasure to live a life poured out. We pour our life out like a drink offering before you, Lord, and we rejoice. Live a life poured out. Be encouraged, everyone. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, woman of God. Uh, for being that vessel whom the Lord could trust to bring this very timely and important message to not just the body of Christ, but to the leaders specifically on the power of the poor. I hope everybody has been blessed by um, uh, just having a glimpse into our worship meeting, our worship meeting. This ministry is a ministry comprised of ministry leaders, fivefold ministry meet leaders. So when we come together on Sunday, we come to assemble as the ecclesia of God, the governing body of God to share the good news of the kingdom and to hear a word from the Lord concerning the condition of the body and our role in it. And today we have learned um, again more about what's in our house <laughs> and the power of the poor of what is in our house. I have so many notes, but um, we don't have a lot of time left because we don't want to exhaust people's attention and ability to hold all of what was received. But we have to do what we do here, which is we, as leaders, the Lord may really put his finger on something. And we want to respond. And it's not so much about responding and clapping up and rubbing up the messenger as it is to responding to the voice of God as he spoke and us giving our verbal a declaration or whatever it is, bringing ourselves into accountability in the presence of others as to what God said to us through this message and what we are going to do about it. Where, where are you at, people? Where are you at, leaders of God? Listen, listen, listen. There's much that you said. There's much that you said. And, I, and for anyone that doesn't know this woman of God, the way God uses her and even the gift she has, she has a strategic uh, mindset. He uses her strategically. So when you said how the prophet... The, how God used the prophet to give her a strategy to package her power for profitability. All of us have an anointing. See, all of us have gifts, but it is when we are walking in that obedience, when we are, when we are yielded to the Lord, that now the anointing comes upon that gift, and that anointing now has a dunamis power to 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 bring us into kingdom wealth, not just. Uh, 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 financial wealth, but wealth in, in, in faith and in, in, in power and ability to do miracles and to transform the world, <laughs> not just our own checkbook, but the world into looking like the kingdom of God, God's original idea 
for this world. And so he gave her a strategy to package her power for profitability. And you let us know that the best way to help people in need, and this is what we got to hold on to, ministers, uh, people of God. It's not always about us being moved into compassion to go and to rescue somebody out of a thing. But the best way to help people in need is to give them a strategy to use their power. <laughs> and so that's what I love about the, the gift of the prophetic. The prophetic realm comes and brings you God's solutions. It gives you God's answers, God's direction, God's wisdom, a word of wisdom. Hallelujah. To bring you out of the place where the enemy has had you bound or where your thoughts about your situation may not even be the enemy. It could just be you, could be your flesh, it could be the world, it could be anything that is uh, opposing your advancement and growth in your faith, in your love, in your obedience, in the kingdom of God, period. So thank you, woman of God, for that. Um, I want to go ahead and open up and give others an opportunity to respond to the word of God that was spoken, and then we will go further and, and close out. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! This is what we need as leaders. We need this, this level of, 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 we need this space. And, and I just pray to those that listen, that join us on Sundays, even if you're not a leader that the word, the, the, the level of accountability and the thrust and the power, the no nonsense, the lack of softness sometimes, that it blesses you too and it causes you to rise up a little higher as well. Come on through, Pastor Billy. Glory uh, well, I just want to thank you, uh, Dr. Tylesha. That was uh, that was very proficient. And I really appreciate that. Um it is a blessing to find others who, uh, how'd you put it, Apostle Marguerite, who stretch out as well, who who go deep, right? Uh, 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 deep cries out to deep, right? Deep cries out to deep. And so um, I can really appreciate it when, uh, when someone's really willing to take the time to go into the Greek and the Hebrew and go into the scriptures and be proficient in everything. So I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to prepare that and go through it all with us. It was a it was a wonderful blessing to receive that. Um, I just wanted to share the one thing that I kept hearing over and over and over again was that the Lord empowers us. That's what I kept hearing you say was the Lord empowers us, uh, not only empowers us, but empowers us to empower others, right? And so, um, and uh, one thing that you said that really uh, popped out at me was um, the scripture, uh, the measure you use will be measured back to you. And uh, you're going to have to be patient with me because it reminds me of another, uh, another story I heard. And it's a short one. I'll be quick, I promise. Um, but the, and you guys have probably heard this, but there was once a, a baker and a butter maker. And um there is this baker who uh, always traded a butter maker a pound of bread for a pound of butter. And uh, one time he went to the butter maker and traded a pound of bread for a pound of butter. But when he got home, he found out that he was getting shorted on butter. He's like, this pound of butter is not a pound. So he took him to court and he sued him and he goes, I have been giving him a pound of bread every week and he's supposed to give me a pound of butter every week and he has been shorting me on a pound of, of butter. And so the judge goes, OK, well, uh, what scale do you use to the butter maker? And the butter maker says, I, I don't have a lot of money, so I don't have a professional scale. I made my own scale, so I always just give him the exact amount of butter that he gives me of bread. So whatever amount of bread that he was given is the exact amount of butter that was given, and he made sure that it was evenly scaled in the back. And so, uh, and that's just what the measure you use will be measured back to you. And so I thought, wow, that is so good. And uh, he empowers us, and and we also have the ability to empower ourselves by 
if we want to go back for more. It reminds me of my kids. You know, I tell them, if you're hungry, the food's always there. You will never have an empty plate. You can always come back to the kitchen for more. You have to decide when you're done eating. You don't ever have to have an empty plate. You decide when you're done eating, but you have to make the choice if you come back for seconds or not. I'm not going to force the food back onto your plate when you're done eating. So, uh, but thank you so much. It was a wonderful blessing. I greatly appreciate you. You are a blessing. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, Dr. Yay. <laughs> it was awesome, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, oh, just so many nuggets. So many nuggets, but um, one thing that really uh, just really stood out to me uh, is the fact of my, am I desperate? You know, I began to think about that, my level of desperation, you know, will dictate my determination. That's good. <laughs> because, you know, um, you think about it, I mean, you know, even like cleaning your house and clean, you know, things like you, you got to keep doing and, you know, and it's just like, you get to a point where you're just, look, I'm, I, I've had enough, you know, I, I, I'm desperate for Mr. Clean, <laughs> you know what I mean? The common organ, I need that order, you know, and so that's going to give me the determination to do what I have to do. Um, I'm desperate for my degree. I'm desperate to finish what God has started in me. So when I when I'm desperate for it, when I'm desperate for the things of God and and fulfilling my purpose, then that's what it's going to level up my determination. I don't have to kind of, you know, that was so good because I begin to think about that. You know, I don't have to conjure up, you know, this kind of determination. It's going to be the, how bad do I want it? How bad do I want it? That's going to, you know, that's my staying power. My staying power, my determination level is, you know, dependent on my desperation, my, my need to finish this thing or see it to completion or even start. You know, there's some things that we need to start. Are you desperate to see this thing even, you know, begin, you know, in your life? So that, oh, that, <laughs> that was one of the many. <laughs> but that really, really stuck out to me because I guess the, you know, of the season I'm in now. Um, Because sometimes we can get comfortable. We can get complacent. Oh, excuse me. We, I said we, excuse me. I can get comfortable and complacent and not really, you know, you know, even in our walk with God, you know, I even think about my, you know, when I was four years old, y'all, uh, well, Pastor, Pastor Christy, uh, Billy, <laughs> I would say when I was four, right? <laughs> yeah, my mom got saved and I wanted Jesus too. And I still want him. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, but like when I, I when I was six years old, I was like walking around my grandmom's house and telling my uncle Michael, "You need to be saved. You need Jesus. You need him in your heart, Uncle Michael. Did you get him in your heart yet?" Six years old. You know, I'm just telling him, and I, all that to say, do I still have that fire? Do I still have that passion? Am I still desperate to see people, you know, saved? Who, who have I brought to Christ lately? You know, who have I ministered to? Am I desperate, you know, to see the things of God manifest, the kingdom of God manifest? You know, or, I, or I'm just like, eh, <laughs> eh. You know, just kind of laid back and and no, I, I want to be be desperate, desperate for the things of God, desperate to be a vessel of honor, fit for the master's use. I want to be available. God, I am available. 
you know, to be used. But I don't want to be, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be a paper plate. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, paper plates is how you, you just use them and throw them out. No, I want to be like the ones on the top shelf, you know, with the China where grandma said, don't you dare touch my China. You know, I, you know, where God can say, you know what? This is a special mission. Sean, come on. I need you to, you know what I'm saying? You know, fit for the man. That's what that, that's what Timothy says. Timothy says, you know, there are some, you know, bronze and some, you know, regular kind of goblets. And Dr. Johnson talked about our uniqueness. You know, I want to be silver and gold and, you know, uh, uh, honorable unto the Lord. You know, I want to hear him well done, but I got to do well. You know, and my level of desperation is going to um, spark my determination. So thank you, Dr. Johnson. Love ya. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, yeah. Who's next? <laughs> God bless y'all. <laughs> thank you, Dr. T. Oh, for the word straight from God in the name of Jesus. And the same, the word des desperate. And I say, you could be so desperate for so much, but the desperation has to turn into determination so strong that it overrides everything else. That was one part. I got so many, I have to listen again because I got to get the scriptures. And then don't be a hoarder. You can be a hoarder of things that God gives you. It's like, oh, I'm going to hold on to it because only be, and I'm talking about me, because it's like, oh my God, I'm so, you know, I'm holding on so tight. And God is saying, I gave it to you. What are you doing with it? Let it go. You know, so you can hoard God's, as he poured into you, <laughs> you can hoard it. You have to let it flow out of you. Move in what God has given to you. Because what God has given you to you, no man can take it away. He gave it to you. Each and of ever every one of us are unique in his own eyes. And like we said earlier, there are people, I think of it this way, you know how we have angels on assignment? Well, we as his people have people that is on our assignment. And he wants our voice, our words, our determination to go out, to know, see once you know something, once you really know it and it's in you and God knows that you know it and you don't do it, I always say, I refuse. I am not going to be a wicked servant because now he knows that you know better and you still want to do that. That is not, mm -mm. then you will get thrashed with many stripes and whip with many <laughs> because he knows, it's like, but I know that you know better. So even with this, there are certain things that was like, in my spirit, because my spirit was like, mm -hmm, you know, soaking it up like a sponge, you know, I said, I never saw it that way. And that's what the word does. It reveals the history and the mystery behind the word that God is doing and teaching and showing us. Even if you know the scripture, front, back, address, upside down, whatever, there is always other keys. And that's what this message really did. It was so many keys that was given to us to unlock the doors that is in us to reveal so God could really use us. Use it to main, and the keys that he gave us is to be used to maintain what we have. How does God want to use us? Ask yourself, how does he? And he will give you that key and open up what's in your house. God bless you, woman of God. Praise God. Anyone else? Praise God. Amen, Doc. That yeah, seems to amaze me. I praise God for this powerful evangelistic word, a reminder of how and and I and I and I can I can just confirm that the the, the vein that you work your word in today is much needed. I mean, just speaking for myself. The reminder of the responsibility of what we have been given to do, the responsibility of what God has given us 
charged with in this earth and how we know that there are there are people waiting for our gift to be operated in so they can operate in their gift. So then therefore we have these abilities that God has given us and we sit on it. And then there we move at a pace that is not conducive to what God needs us to move in. And so this was a, a, a good hard word. And you and, and it is a, a come to Christ word. It's, it's evangelistic, even for the leadership and those that even would hear it that's not considered themselves leaders or have not taken that responsibility because the invitation is there, but there's a responsibility. And in and getting that responsibility, you know that there is a, there's no timeline on God promises for our lives. It's contention on the measure of how we move, how we move, how you move towards the direction that God has called you and put yourself in the, 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 the posture of understanding that it is not I, but it is the Lord. So if you can find yourself in that posture that you will believe and trust that by faith as you walk through the fear, God will move in your favor to bring that bring that, that doubt, that fear, that, uh, that naysayer in your ear syndrome to not involve. So Thank you for the word. Thank you for the great reminder because you know there are so many, <clears throat> excuse me, there's many things that God started in me that I'm still working on. There are many ministries that God started in me. I'm going to speak about me. And so it's a reminder of if you haven't completed the first thing, if you haven't completed the first thing, don't have expectations for the next. Simply because the weight of what God gives you can be as powerful as you can have the faith to believe it. And if you have the audacity to believe God in those circumstances, and once you start walking in that direction, you see the doors opening. You, you, you know, but then when you consider what you've accomplished or what you're trying to accomplish, that's where we fall short. Well, that's where I fall short because I put dependence on my ability when, as Apostle Desiree spoke about, just give your availability. Your availability, not your ability to do a thing. Your availability is to be the vessel that, that's poured out, that can be poured into. And so I, I love the analogy about the poor. Uh, you know, you always got that acostus. Is that what it's called? What is it called? Acostus. But anyway, um, thank you, woman of God. You're always um, on time. Your prophetic word, your prophetic gifts. is, And it is uh, 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 confirmed that your word is needed in this season of the lives of those that will hear it. Whether it be leader or just a lay person. We have to understand that to be a, 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 a willing and a yielding vessel to the kingdom of God, we can have all that he said that we can have. The promises are not on a time, a time schedule. So know that the blessings of the Lord is our portion. And in any measure you want to believe it in, but you have to take off the blinders of your understanding and allow your heart to be cared for by putting it in the hand of the Lord and let it be multiplied in the love that he gives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. That's so good. Anyone else? Praise God. Glory to God. All right, all right, all right, all right. Praise God, praise God. Once again, Doc, we thank you. I mean, I, you know, when someone, when God gives you something, you know, he always does exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think of. And I'm telling you, when Evangelist and uh, Evangelist DeBray and I were talking and 
God dropped this in our spirit for Alam to, you know, um, have this anniversary in the theme. It is like God has really just taken us, I believe, as a ministry and individually to another level. And I'm excited to see what the results are. And it's and it's just not, you know, by coincidence that Pastor Billy and uh, Brother Joe and um, his precious wife, um, I mean, Pastor Billy's wife, Rebecca, um, you know, that the timing, timing is everything. You know, they could have came in July, they could have came in August, you know what I mean? But October, our month, this month, you know, and I believe that God is leveling us up together. And so we're just grateful um, for the opportunity to be able to be a part of this ministry. And I love what Apostle said, you know, that this ministry, you know, isn't, you know, it, I mean, and I don't say it in a, like a mean way, but it really is not for everyone, you know? And so I'm, you know, we're okay with that. You know, we're okay with the nature of this ministry. It's different. Hello, my name is different. Hello, CK, we're different. Remember that, y'all? You know, we're different, you know? So it's not, because people say, oh, where are you going to church now? CK, oh, well, you know, it just gets complicated, you know? But I, I tell them, you know, this is, this, you know, well, I want to, okay, well, uh, let me send you my, the Zoom link or send, send you uh, the, to the Facebook page, you know, whatever, because it's different. And um, I'm just glad. I'm glad to be. I'm glad we're unique. Thank you that you unique in um, in that. OK, so you all know today was the day that we were going to pledge. OK, um, this month is a special month. Of course, you all know it's our 11th year anniversary. So we thought that we would give a special offering. Um, and some of you all did pledge. Thank you for those that did. And so, I mean, you can, you can still pledge, but we wanted to just kind of get an idea. And sometimes when you put, you know, your name somewhere <laughs> and the amount that you're going to give, you know, most likely you're going to actually give, we're not going to come after you, believe me, I don't have that kind of time. Okay. Uh, and that's between you and the Lord, you know, um, as far as the pledge. So we're pledging multiples of 11. Okay, so it may be 22, two times, um, three times 11 is 33, or, you know, 12 times 11 is something. <laughs> I think one, 130, uh, anyway, I forget it. <laughs> forget about it, okay? Y'all know, do the math. Um, but anyway, so the point is we're doing multiples of 11, okay? So if you can, like I said, we said, this is over and above your tithes. You know, this is an offering to the church, you know, and this is to the ministry. This is our seed of saying, Lord, thank you for these 11 years. Thank you that apostle and prophet said, yes, thank you that my life will never be the same because of their yes. Thank you, Lord. And I'm sowing this seed into the ground for 11 plus year, more years of what God is going to do, just in anticipation of what he's going to do. I believe in naming my seed. You know, I, I just believe in that naming my seed as far as putting it in the ground and just believing God for miraculous things to happen. So, um, anytime before the end of the month, anytime before October 31st, you are uh, welcomed. Uh, you can use our cash app. I'm going to put it right in. Hold on. I'm going to put it right in the, uh, the Zoom chat. Okay. Uh, dollar sign CEK Ministries. And you can give at any time, uh, whether you did your pledge form or not, it's, you know, it's okay. You can do it before the end of the day, uh, but I am going to close the, the pledge. And if you choose to, you can just give, you know, and um, so this is good ground. This is good ground we're sowing on. And we believe that God uh, likes cheerful givers. 
So if you're one of those people that say, eh, 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 don't get it. <laughs> don't do it. It it ain't even worth it, honey. Keep your money. <laughs> God was a cheerful giver. You know, he wants us to be, you know, even if you have $11, you know, or whatever, you know, what if you have $5, what? Look at the widow mite, you know, but she had the two mites. It's fine, you know, but we just want to be able to, we want you in on it because God wants to put, God's not necessarily wants to take things out of your hand. God wants to put something in our hands. <laughs> these hands are giving hands. Praise God. God, you can trust these hands. Hallelujah. With wealth, you can trust these hands. Dr. Ty talked about it. He, you can trust these hands with blessings. You can trust these hands. Talk to your hands sometimes. Lord, thank you. Thank you for these hands because these are giving hands. These are hands that will give. If you put it in my hands, God, if you put wealth in my hands, if you put overflow in my hand, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give and I'm going to give and, and it will come back to me. I declare it in the decree. It will come back. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. You know, sometimes preachers say, I don't know. I don't want to have no, I don't really want to talk about money. Hey, I'm going to talk about money. Talk about money. I'm gonna talk about giving. I'm gonna, because guess what? I've seen God. I've seen God. I've seen him move. So anyway, so that's what we're doing. Um, and so we're grateful to God for um the opportunity. And we as alum are also we know that this is clergy appreciation month. There's a lot going on this month, and so um alum, we are going to um you know give our our prophet and our, our apostle a special gift um at the end of the month just to just to love on them and let them know how how special um they really are too and how near and dear they are to our hearts so we're grateful about that all right so if you want to get in on the alarm giving of course every last sunday of the month you definitely can do that you know so that's fine you guys know the alarm um i'll put that apostolic it's apostolic lom okay so it's apostolic l a m um dollar sign for cash app okay all right uh dr johnson would you mind um prayer and blessing and closing us out um and we thank you thank you pastor uh billy thank you brother joseph thank you sister rebecca thank you pastor robert all the way from Kenya. Hallelujah, the motherland. Thank God for uh, Brother Chris and all of you all were glorious. Um, we're just grateful. We're grateful. We're happy people. Praise God. So thank you, Dr. Ty. Praise God. To God be the glory. Um, I just give God all the glory and all the praise, all the honor for, for just all of uh, what everyone has said. Um, I bless God for each and every one of you. Um, Pastor Billy, you are a blessing as well. Everyone is, is a blessing um, to the body. I praise God to for this branch of Zion that you and uh, Brother Joseph and uh, Sister Rebecca, that you all have come alongside of us. I messaged Brother Joseph and I was like, it's, it's good to see you over here on this side because <laughs> uh, we were, we were connected on TikTok and so. <laughs> and so I was so glad to see him in the room and um, see you in the room. We were already connected. So I praise God. And that's because of Apostle. And so there's there are some others that I'm connected to um, that uh, connected with me over there in the TikTok land. But praise God. To God be the glory. Um, I'm going to tell y'all. <laughs> Ooh, that probably could have been about two or three more part, like a two, three part series. I'm, I was like, Lord, we can't, we can't do anymore because yeah, we can't. <laughs> we just have to do it another time, Jesus. I mean, y'all know when he be speaking all the way up until he'd be like, for real, like I was finished. We finished already. I had hit save on the, on the computer. You you still said something else you needed me to put on there? Okay. <laughs> but he he does it. He's he is so amazing. His word is inexhaustible. So just kind of just gotta just at some point you just gotta go ahead and put the period there and just 
remember those points that you got to do some other time. <laughs> it's just so evangelist you want to say something else? i'm sorry i meant to let people know that next week is our last week of our what's in the house um i, I need prayer okay i, I want y'all to pray for me i was wondering how much meat you had left on the bone but that's what i'm saying that's why I, I, need I, pray. I just stated as i just stated his word is inexhaustible that's so i believe i believe we gonna go Deeper still. Yes, there. Deeper still. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yes, there. Deeper I'm going, still. I'm going through um, fear in faith. Hallelujah. Listen, Praise deeper God. still. <laughs> deeper still. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that will be from Evangelist Sean Outlaw next week. Um, I was like, ooh, these these pickets is pretty slim, but <laughs> Listen, who did it? God did it. All right. Because <laughs> if he don't do it, I don't look, I won't even, I would have just called and said, like, been calling off of work or something. Uh, listen, I don't have nothing. Uh, you got to get somebody else to, because I, I refuse. Like, I'm not that one. I'm serious, y'all. I'm serious. I, I will never be that one. I can promise you this that will sit up here and, and, tell y'all that this is a word from the lord if the lord didn't give me a word i'm gonna i will i will call off of work okay <laughs> i know y'all had me on the flyer and i and i wanted to be uh, uh, available and present and all that but i didn't get a word so i i'm not gonna have anything to say let somebody else say something y'all do a round robin or something open up the scripture and let everybody you look we just have to do something different okay <laughs> But I praise God. He came on through to God be the glory. Um, may this may this word be sealed within your hearts, within your spirit, within your mind. Hallelujah. May you be the submitted vessel, the prepared sanctuary. Hallelujah. Pure and holy, tried and true. Hallelujah. Let us, Father God, hallelujah, serve you with gladness, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let it Bring us joy to our heart, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let it be a pleasure. Let it be meat and nourishment to us as it was for Jesus. Hallelujah. To do the will of the Father that sent us, Father. Father God, we said, Lord God, send me. We will go. When you ask the word, hallelujah. When you ask the question, who will go for us to Isaiah? We respond just like Isaiah. And we said, send me. Hallelujah. Lord, here am I. Send me. And so, Father, we're saying, here we are, send us, Lord God. And so, Father, I ask you, Lord God, hallelujah, that we will be willing and obedient vessels, that we will be submitted, Father God, and committed, Father God, and determined and dedicated, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that, Father God, hallelujah, that we, Lord God, will seek, Lord God, to please you, to walk in purpose, Lord God, in our giftings, in our callings, and in the anointing, Lord God, because it is that, Lord God, it is upon that, Lord God, that you will uh, multiply, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will exponentially increase, Lord God. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for divine wisdom, divine strategy, Lord God, that are coming upon your people, Lord God, as they execute, as they seek to execute, Lord God, according to your will and to your plan, Lord God. Let them seek you for step one, two, and three, Lord God. Let them seek you, Lord God, hallelujah. Even if it's just step one, Lord God, hallelujah. Let them do that, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you. That, Father God, you order our steps, Lord God, in your word, Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for sealing, Lord God, this word in our hearts by Holy Spirit of promise and by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken. I love you all. God bless. Mm -hmm.